thing once said, that's not my walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to New Zealand in Focus. I'm your host, Robert Newcastle. Here I am today with our formal, former premier, Sir Julius Vogel. Thank you, Robert. Welcome to the show, Sir Vogel. I understand that you were born to a humble family on the outskirts of London. Can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Yes, Robert. I was born on the 24th of February, 1835, to Albert and Phoebe Vogel. Childhood for my two siblings and I was not a very happy one. My mother was a selfish and unhappy woman, which I believe led to my father moving to America when I was 11. I remember the day well because my father gave me a silver watch on a chain so I could wear it on my Eaton suit. Did you ever see your father much after his departure? No, I unfortunately never saw him again, although he wrote almost weekly. Could you tell our viewers a little about your education? Well, well, Robert, I had an education typical for a boy of my background and social status, Robert. A governess taught me at home until, thir until I was 13. After that, I went to a boarding school for another two years. When I was 15, I went to work for my uncle, Alexander Isaac, whom we had moved in with after he, my father left. I understand that afterwards you chose to enroll at the Government School of Mines. That's Mines, Robert. Oh, I'm sorry. What prompted you to make this decision? Well, soon after my mother died in 1851, England received notice that a large quantity of gold was discovered in Victoria, Australia. I decided to head over and see if I could possibly profit from the venture. Unlike the many hundred people leaving for Australia, I had decided to go to school first, so I could become an assayer once I arrived. Could you tell us a little bit about your trip? Well, the, the voyage over to Australia took three and a half months and was really cramped. Our ship was an old sailing vessel called the Bila. It was a pleasant name, but the food was horrible and the water was putrid. We arrived in late December, 1852, and when we got to Melbourne, it was in chaos. The miners and prospectors had set up an enormous amount of makeshift tents and shacks on either side of the main street. Almost 300 ships had arrived carrying thousands of people and Melbourne was very crowded. When did you move to New Zealand? Well, after nine years of living in Australia, gold was discovered in New Zealand. And so I decided to move here. I arrived here in 1861 when I was 26 and decided to have a go at politics. I was elected into the Dunedin Community Council shortly after I arrived. You were elected to Premier in 12 years' time, were you not? Yes, I was elected in 1873 and served for three years. I was the eighth Premier of New Zealand, and I am very proud to have been the first Jewish one. What are some of your achievements as Premier? I would have to say, Robert, I am most proud of issuing numerous bonds to help fund railway construction and the improvement of New Zealand's roads and communication. I want to know, as do many of our viewers, what are you doing now? Well, after I resigned in 1876, I became Agent General for the Daniel Paulin Administration. I was later knighted and soon after quit my job as Agent General. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Sir Vogel, for interrupting you, but I am receiving some breaking news. This just then, Robert Louis Stevenson has died. We have a report that Robert Louis Stevenson has died from a brain hemorrhage at the age of 44. He was the author of best-selling books such as Treasure Island and Dr. Drickle and Mr. Hyde. A sad, sad day. And speaking of authors, I understand they have recently published a book. That is so, Robert. It is titled Anno Domini 2000. And it, is, and, it, and it is the first science fiction book written by a New Zealander. I highly recommend you purchase it because it's a very good price, only 25 guineas. And if you order within the next two minutes, you could possibly have the chance of being in the draw to win a box of this newly invented breakfast food called Kellogg's Cereal. Could you tell our viewers a little of what it is about? My pleasure. 
Anno Domini 2000 is about a woman called Hilda Fitzherbert. She lives in the year 2000 when women like herself hold many positions of power, like Premier or Member of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> like that would ever happen. That's why it's called a science fiction book. <laughs> I think one with that, Sir Bogle. Thank you for sharing a bit about yourself with our viewers. My pleasure. Good night. Good night. Later, we discuss the new invention, the paperclip. Life-changing gadget or just a tw twisted piece of wire? But now, a word from our sponsor, Coca-Cola. We'll